in Tasmania. But thanks for joining me. As I said, I'm just going to make sure that my sound and everything is okay. Just bear with me. No, that's not it. Just waiting for my iPad to catch up. That's it there. Cool. Oh, oh definitely can hear my voice. That sounds okay. Um, forgive the shadows in the craft room today. We've got um, a very, very dull day outside um, after a scorcher yesterday. It's quite a, a contrast. Um, anyway, so I've got my various lights on, so sometimes the shadows are a bit iffy. But anyway, well, I think this is the best setup I can get at the moment, given the, the light outside. Um, today we're going to be doing a um, what I discovered from on Pinterest on my travels is called a pop-out bendy fold card. It sounds quite uh, interesting up front. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's quite a pretty card and I have to admit I'm using the uh, Country Floral Lane designer series paper from the new mini catalogue. It's the first time I've picked it up. It didn't really appeal um, to begin with. I'm, I'm not going to pretend that everything in the catalogue always appeals because sometimes it doesn't. But uh, this one sort of I thought, yeah, yeah, hearts. I'm not really a hearts and flowers sorts of girl. But picking it up, it is so darn cute. It is really nice. and. As much as I'm not overly fond of those hearts there, the ones that sort of are the, the focal image, I do love the other papers and so I'm using a lot of those in this card today. In fact, I'm using five. Five of the six designs are popping up in the card today so we're going to get a really good look at it um, as we go. I'm also using one of my favourite em embossing folders at the moment, the Cane Weave embossing folder. It's in the new mini catalogue as well and you can see it on the front there. It's really cute. I just love it to bits. It's so, you use it for just about anything. Um, so anyway, as I say, new fold for me. I haven't come across this one before and I will um, uh, I will credit the, I can't remember the demonstrator who I got the original idea from, um, but I'll credit her in the notes. But uh, yeah, so it's a really cute. has a bit of a belly band happening because basically if you don't have the belly band, it doesn't sit flat at all it's a bit hard be hard to get in an envelope um, but when you open it up the star of the show is that little central pop out bit which you can see pretty well there it's actually um yeah it, it, you'd have to give the person you're giving it to a, a demonstration of how to uh, display it because it has to have that sort of fold in the back to make that little front bit um pop out like that so but it's really cute isn't it so cute that is the cutest thing Anyway, so that's how we're going to make this one. Um, lots of designer series paper in this one, so I'm not sure it'll ever make it to a class unless I can work out a way of um, cutting down the designer series paper. It might make it to a product class where we just um, uh, we just uh, highlight that paper and nothing else. Anyway, so I am also using, as you can see, my favourite stylish shapes um, banner, sentiment banners. Also using the framed florets dies to get those beautiful ovals happening. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's about it. That and the paper. Oh, and the cute bling. I'll show you the cute bling in a minute. Absolutely the cutest little bling there. Anyway, so let's get started. I have most of the card cut. Um, I will have to cut the paper to fit because I, I, I ran out of time a wee bit there this morning. Okay, so the main star of the show for this one is the design of the card base so what you've actually got here is a eight inch by five and a half inch piece of cardstock so this is and I'm using thick white cardstock just to give it that extra stru structure so it doesn't bend in between the bits where I want it to bend um, yeah so and I've as um, you probably know I've trimmed down the quarter of an inch so I've tr trimmed down the um, the uh, A4 would normally be eight and a quarter wide and I've actually trimmed it down to eight and that's only because I wanted to score it at two, four and six and I didn't have to, we didn't want to worry about the little eighths of an, eighths and sixteenths of an inch that probably would have been involved to cut it down to quarters like that if I'd left that little quarter of an inch on. So anyway, that's the star there. So that's the bit that we're going to start with. So what we need to do next is basically decorate the inside of this one before we add the actual um, bendy mechanism. So I'm going to bring in two pieces of the designer series paper, this cute one with the bikes 
and hopefully that that um, focus will come back pretty soon. Not, it's, as I say, we're struggling with the light in the craft craft room today, and that's going to form cause issues with the camera, unfortunately. So bear with me. I'll just let my camera so she wants to be up there, doesn't she? So come on, come down here. Anyway, I'll keep going on and hopefully she'll decide to behave herself shortly. I don't know why my camera has all of a sudden become a she, but she's being a little bit disobedient. Come on. Sorry about this, guys. Let's give her something midway to focus on and see if she'll take it down. Maybe I muck around with my light a bit and see if I get a bit more light on the situation, whether that helps. Ah, there we are. So we're going to have a few more shadows than we probably would want, but at least we're going to get our focus back. So that's good. Yes, I don't know what happened to the world after yesterday. We had 30 degrees plus and uh, a beautiful bright sunlight. And then today uh, it's basically uh, decided to be rainy. Oh, I think the rain's finished for the day, but very overcast, very dark. Um, so anyway, so I've got two of the papers here. These are the two I'm going to use on the inside of our card, um, which, let's face it, is the is the focal point of this one. We've got this cute one with the bicycles and we've got this one with it's got lots of little hearts um, in, in it. So what we need is, because each of our little alcoves there is two inches wide, I'm going to take these down to one and seven eighths. So I need two of the pink hearts. Now, if, if you liked the other side, you could also go the contrast and just use the other side. But I'm going to use the different paper as well. As I said, I want to use as many of the papers as possible. And now she's gone again. I think I saw someone say she needs a coffee, and you could well be right. I might pop it up a bit. She might be she. Anyway, the camera may be suffering a bit with the how close we are. I did a zoom last night and zooms are always really zoomy. It zooms in. So let's see how we go. We go a bit further up. We might have a bit of better luck. Come on. It might have just reached its life's end as a camera. Who knows? Who knows? There you go. It's back again. Let's see how far that goes. So they are two, uh, one and seven eighths wide, and I'm going to make them th uh, five and three eighths tall. And that's going to fit our five and a half inch card with just a, a wee bit of a border. Then I'm going to take this beautiful bike, or bicycle one, and as long as I've got enough width, which I do, I'm going to take that this way. Five and what was that? Five and three eighths, and then one and seven eighths. There we go. So these are the pieces that we're going to pop on the inside of our little bendy card. I don't think I need that anymore. We'll just bring this back in. Okay, so just grab some glue. And we'll pop that in. So the pink one is going to pop on the inside. Just moved back too far. Let's go come forward a bit. Just move my chair back to fix the um, overhead and then forgot to move forward again. I've got some, something clogging up my glue. I have to go a new glue. Come on. Big day yesterday. I um, I don't know if I'd mentioned to you guys, but I've um, bought my dad's car from, from my mum from the estate and uh, I didn't want to really take possession of it until I'd sold my current car. And um, yesterday I managed to sell it. It was so good. Not through any of the, uh, you know, 
selling platform. So it was actually just a friend, the sister of a friend whose car had uh, coincident, well, fortunately for me, unfortunately for them, um, broken down, died, she called it. So I'm assuming that was worse than broken down. And uh, so they were in the market for a car, which was pretty much the price range and um, model and make of, of the one I had. So my little Lancer has dis has gone, which I was very sad to see her go in the end. We've had her since she was new. Everything's a she. You might work that out with me. My camera's a she. My car's a she. Had a lot less trouble with the car than we've had with the camera today. She was a good little car. Anyway, so, yes, they rolled up. And took her for a very short drive just up and around the street and then handed me $5,000. It was like, don't you even want to quibble? Do you want a bargain? I mean, I'm, I'm already for a bit of a, you know, argy-bargy here, but no, they just handed the money over and, and I did actually say so she wanted to pay. She wanted to... Yeah, anyway, I, admit, I won't admit this to my husband, but I actually said when she went to hand over the full amount, I said, don't you want to bargain a little bit? And she said, oh, oh okay, um, I'll offer you 5000 And I went, okay, I'll take 5000 So it really wasn't much bargaining. I just sort of basically gave her $500 off. But I was so pleased that um, the car was going to a good home. Um and someone that we know so that was good well no a friend of a friend type thing so there's our inside done there so anyway my car's gone but I had spent quite a bit transferring the dad's car over to my name so we sort of came out of it even which is good okay so that's our inside of the card there quite cute in itself so that's basically if you took that as just a card that would be like a gatefold card wouldn't it really except we've got that extra bend in the back so that's where we're headed. Okay, so let's do the um, let's do the outside now because I just want to get these on. So here I have two just plain white pieces of cardstock, and I've popped it through that cane weave embossing folder that we talked about before, and I just love it. And it just if we pop those closed, we can pop those on the front, and it just gives just the sort of so sort of I want to say sumptuous it's almost like um it's like it's uh you've wrapped it in a in a, a basket or something it's just uh yeah it's really nice I like it it's a couple of embossing folders in the new fold in the new catalog I really like I also like the the one the the masculine one that looks like rivets and I can't remember its name right now it's probably called rivets um because that's what comes to mind but um, that's really nice I'm using that in the next class so you'll get to see that one. Yeah, so that's on one side. Now the only downside is I've got to make sure my fingers are clean. Me and white cardstock haven't been getting on very well since I've been working in the garden a bit lately. So I come in with grimy fingernails and get it all over my white cardstock. But first thing in the morning we should be okay. I haven't been working in the garden yet. Okay, so there's the other side there. So that's just so nice, isn't it? Anyway, let's look there. Okay, so that's the outside done. I really did want to get those on before I start mucking around on the inside because it's going to form a bit of a bump that we, um, you know, that I was going to have difficulty dealing with. And now the sun's decided to come out after being so dreary all day. The sun's decided to come out and form a sunbeam. So I'll just... I'll move slightly to the left. There we go. Anyway, and chances are there'll be another one that comes up there anyway. That's how it tends to go in the craft room. Okay, we've got lots of other bits and bobs here. So the next star of the show is this tiny, unobtrusive little piece of cardstock here. It's, th it's uh, three quarters of an inch wide and it's actually five inches long. Now, the logic here, if you do the math, is that from that score to that score is four inches. And then if you have a half inch turnover on both sides, that makes five inches. Now, when I first tried that, as logical as it sounds, you end up with too much fold at either end. So when you go to fold the card over, it's too lumpy on these sides. So you need to cut this one down. And I've left it at five to show you. 
because you cut it down by hardly anything, probably an eighth of an inch or a couple of millimetres tops. So just cut this one down, not that you can see because my thingy's out of the way. Cut your five inches down by a sixteenth of an inch, just hardly anything, okay? I didn't want to confuse everyone with saying it was four and 15 16th. So it's actually five, five inches long and cut it down by a bit. And then you bring in your scoring and you score it half an inch from each end. Okay, I thought that was probably the easiest way. So five inches cut down by a, sh a smidgen and then half an inch from each end. Okay, and that gives you the bendy part of our card. I'll just pop that over there. So what we need to do is pop some glue on our two little tabs. Do we know anyone who makes those glue pins? Have you seen those on Facebook? Those ones with, they often have beads and things, they're rich, fancy schmancy, but they have like a tiny, the, the main thing is that they have like a, a pin, a big long pin that goes in your glue and it stops it from from drying in the in the in the nozzle. I think I could go one of those. I'd like to support someone who's making handmade. So if anyone knows one or makes them, put their hand up and we can talk. If you have an Etsy store or something, I'd love to know. Okay, so this one I've popped just straight smack bang in the middle of the card. Pretty much the middle. It looks like the middle to me. Okay, and then that is going to pop out like that. Okay. I might just let that have a wee bit of a dry before I get too too rough with it. Let's bring in our belly band now. Now, this piece of cardstock is eight and a quarter long and it's an inch and a half high. And I'm going to use this for my belly band, but I thought I'd measure it on the card itself because some, if I said it's two and a quarter of inches from both ends, it would probably get it would probably be different and you want it to fit nice and snug so what I'm going to do is pop it on my card and then bend the ends up and as long as your two ends meet fairly snugly in the middle there you've got a pretty well placed belly band so there so that overlap there is where I'm going to have to pop my glue so and we know now that that's going to fit our card pretty nicely it's only a very tiny overlap sort of the quarter of an inch from the edge of the there we are so there's another thing that I might let sit for a second So there's our belly band. Okay. Um, oh, I can't let it sit too long because I actually want to bring in the piece of cardstock. So this is a piece of cardstock that is a little bit too short. It should actually be a wee bit longer, but I didn't want to waste a whole um, sheet of this. So I've just cut what I had, and I think it's about six inches long, but imagine it's more like eight inches long, and it's uh, one and three-eighths high. And that's just going to sit just straight on the belly band like that and wrap around so I'll just add some glue to it and if it, as you imagine if it was longer it would probably meet at the back but I thought oh well it doesn't matter too much if it's blank at the back actually I've just had an idea flip the thing over because it's not going to matter it's not going to matter if the ah, just bear with me this is an experiment. It might be terribly, terribly, terribly wrong, but it's an experiment. I'm actually going to flip it over, cover the back of it so it's not plain at the back, and then bring it forward because we're going to cover that central piece with our oval. So let's see how that goes. Okay. Seems a bit weird. That's the front of our belly band. I know it seems a bit weird. Okay, but at least I've covered the back now. And then if I bring in the little oval that's going to sit on the front, it covers the gap completely. So I'm actually decided to have it sort of horizontally. 
it covers the gap. So I'd only need six inches of paper. That's okay. Thinking on my feet, and I know that's a bad thing. I shouldn't do it, but I think it's paid off that time. Okay, let's bring back our card, and we'll go into the centre here because that glue should have set now. What you need is we've, as I mentioned, we've used our fitting florets um, or framed florets oval, the embossed one, the smaller of the two. And then I've cut the centre out of some designer series paper. That's another designer series paper from the pack. Uh, and I've used the centre of the larger oval. Now, if you've got some ovals at home, just um, normal sort of maybe from the last time ovals were offered, you can cut yourself that sort of frame with the ovals. But I do love the embossed nature of that little um, oval. So I'm going to use that one, that little frame. Okay, so I'm just going to add that. I think this, I love the bikes, but I think this little flower pattern is my favourite from the pack. Don't know why. I'm just popping some glue very fine, as fine as I can around the edge, and I'll just fit it to. And like it was designed to go together, they fit together pretty well. As you can see at the back, there's not much overlap there and they look really cute together at the front. I might just get rid of any excess glue on the back there. And from the front as well. So that's our little frame that we're going to have pop up at us from the inside of our card, just like here. Now, I think you could set up a sort of intricate pattern of brackets and wedges and things but I really don't think it's that's what the lady in the she had like another x frame there that everything sort of pinned on don't think because this is nice and light it's not really going to need to hold much just going to pop a tiny piece of double-sided tape in the center of that little bendy bracket just there it's only what half an inch long and that's what I'm going to use to hold my oval in place and I think it works quite well just there and it's not like someone's going to be tugging at it too much and it sits up quite nice okay that's cute oh it's also upside down that's all right <laughs> it was upside down here we go that's it nice Okay, so that is the inside. We're going to pop a sentiment in there. And I just popped this, this is our, um, just one of the stitch banners from the Stylish Shapes. And I just think that looks sort of really nice and simple. There's not too much happening, but I think the paper speaks for itself. I'm using Sweet Sorbet. And uh, the sentiment I'm using, because I don't actually have this bundle, is from the, she says, trying to find it, the Sentimental Park stamp set so this is also new in the um, current mini catalogue and I'm going to write in in the end it's going to be the same as the original card <clears throat> excuse me I'm going to have um where's my belly band um, let's celebrate on the outside and then your anniversary on the inside so I'm just going to grab your anniversary because it's sort of a heart anniversary type card I think And I'm using uh, Sweet Sorbet ink because that's the red in, in this paper just to match it up. There's plenty of room in that um, little sentiment box if I wanted to put something else, but I think that's, that's fine. And we get this one. So I'm just going to pop some glue in the back. and pop that over the top. It really looks like it was meant to be there the whole time. There we go. Okay. Oh, don't unfocus again. You're really making me angry. Might be time to invest in a new camera. Come on. Yeah. 
Yes, definitely time to invest in a new camera. I can't have that happening all the time. Okay, so that's our inside there. Pretty much done. We've got our your anniversary, which is the what we're giving it for. We've got our frame and at least three of our pretty papers there as well. And as I say, when it's on display, it sits up like that. So it sort of pops out at you, hence the name. Okay, so let's finish the front with the belly band. Well, the front is finished. Let's finish the belly band. So... I've got the belly band with the paper. I've got to make sure that's the right way up. That's the back of the belly band. We've got a bit of a gap at the front. I'm going to cover that gap with the oval that's out of the inside of, our, of this oval from the fitted uh, framed florets. I'm not wanting to waste anything. That's what I'm going to use it for. On the original belly band, I've put the oval vertically up and down. But this time I'm going to go crossways mostly to cover that gap that I've got in my paper, but also because it felt as there was too much blank space on that one, so I think um, vertically would be better. So let's just pop some glue on here. Definitely time for a new glue, time for a new camera and time for new glue. Things are changing. New car, new glue. There we go. So that's on there. So that's really good. That actually covers that gap in the paper, which is really good. I like that. There we are. Now, to decorate the front, I'm going to use the parts that I thought told that I mentioned I'm not overly fond of. Shouldn't say that, should I? But I'm not. Um, so I thought I would just fussy cut them out. So I need a couple of the hearts, the big red hearts and the flowers. I might add a couple of the little um, pink ones as well. I assume that would be petal pink. Everything seems to be petal pink at the moment. I mentioned it to the ladies last night. Every paper seems to have petal pink in it at the moment. Running out of cardstock to keep up. So I'll just fussy cut a couple of these little hearts and a couple of the leaves. Now the sweet, if you buy the sweet or the bundle, has a punch that punches this paper out exactly in the configuration that's there. So like the two hearts and the two leaves. Um, yeah, so if you didn't want to fussy cut, you can do that. And obviously the... Once the paper's no longer with us, you can stamp those images out with the bundle. There's two hearts. Might take one of those little uh, pink hearts as well. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but we'll cut it anyway. And two leaves. Was a bit intrigued by the hearts and leaves business. We, we're assuming that heart, they're heart-shaped flowers, are we? Or they're a plant that love grows? Or I don't know if anyone can enlighten me on the hearts and leaves logic. I'd be um, most obliged, whatever your theory happens to be. I'll let you in a little secret. I'm not a naturally artistic person, so there might be some artistic logic to it. I'm, I'm more of a numbers girl, but um, yeah. But we'll go with the leaves anyway. I'll just get those cut out. Got a fair few on today. If you're um, new to the channel, just uh, let me know where you're watching from. Um, it's lovely to see how far afield from my little corner of Tassie that, or corner of um, Australia that I reach. It's really nice to get to places like I've just seen a Canada Canadian person. That's lovely. Does the punch coordinate with that DSP? Yes, yes, Amy, it does. It does. It's um, it just basically. It's 
those four, one, two, three, four, it's the two leaves and the two hearts just in a punch. That's uh, basically what it is. Okay, so let's do this. So we've got our two hearts, or three hearts. Let's see what we do with them. Three hearts and two leaves. And I'm going to pop another sentiment on here as well. So I've got another one of those um, uh, stitched banner from the Stylish Shapes. And this is going to be our let's, separate, let's celebrate. So we'll grab that. So let's celebrate on the outside and your anniversary on the inside. And that could be anything on the inside, couldn't it? It could be let's celebrate your birthday or let's celebrate your graduation. I don't know if that's a graduation card. Let's celebrate. What else does it have in the set? Your new baby. Is it a baby card? I'm not quite sure about that. You know, or your new adventure. Mm, not sure about that either. But anyway, let's celebrate. Yeah, those of you following the adventure of my husband and when he finally deems to go back to work, he actually went into the office today. Um, he did actually say to me, we've got 10 cubic metres of pine bark sitting outside the window here. And he actually said to me, I might take the day off so we can put that pine bark around because it's going to be not hot. And I sort of thought to myself, yeah, you're supposed to be back at work and you've only been back at work three days and you're going to take a day off to uh, put the pine bark down. And then he thought, he said, oh, no, I can't have the day off. I've got some meetings. I thought, oh, well, day three, you'll actually go into the office. He's a funny one. I think he's where he's, he's definitely winding down to retirement in July. I don't know how I'm going to handle having him home the whole time. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to pop that heart there and then this one. Mm -hmm. Bit of a problem. I want those two closer together than that. How close can I get them? Okay. Not as close as I would have liked. What are we going to do here? That's because I've flipped everything sideways, so it's now longer than it is um, high. Well, that's okay. We'll go that way. And I can't have it overhang this far, way too far, because it'll um it'll go too far off the edge. Anyway, okay, we'll, we'll pl plough on. Okay, so I'm going to grab some dimensionals and pop my sentiment box on dimensionals. We'll see how it looks. I might have been too clever for my own good, eh? <laughs> you hate Reese always. Yeah, I'm a bit worried about that, Cheryl. Always, always underfoot. But he does have a lot of things that he's going to do. So he's going to do this and he's going to do that. So let's see if going to actually happens. Um, he knows that I'm concentrating on my stamping up business at the moment. So he knows not to, not to get too in the way. Let's hope anyway. Let's hope. My... Um, dad my poor poor lovely poor dad um he retired at 50 he was really young he retired he was working for the government and they wanted to restructure some things basically things that would make him more accountable in his job but he wasn't having it <laughs> he liked to be a little bit autonomous and uh so he he retired when they brought in these changes and um he was only 50 and mum would have been only 50 as well. And mum ran a, um, yeah, at that time she ran a, a little hobby ceramics business from her home. And she had a, the garage set up as a studio and ladies would come and do little ceramics, make little pots and, and um, cups and things like that. It was all very cute. But when dad retired, it was like, oh, she just got so angry with him. He'd come down to the garage when she was having a class and he'd, he loved the ladies. He, he really always did love ladies. <laughs> anyway, 
he loved it and he used to come and he'd bop his nose in and he'd be telling them what to do and and mum would get really really angry because he really didn't know what he was talking about and um and she'd uh, tell him to politely go away but the ladies loved him having him there as well anyway she got so sick of him bopping his nose in after a while that she uh, she told him to go back to work so at about 52 or 53, he went back to work um, for another few years until proper retirement time, mum called it. Um, yeah, it was funny. So I'm a bit worried Stephen's going to be a bit like that, eh? Okay, I'm just fiddling with these leaves now. I think we definitely need the leaves in this little setup. Just to add a little bit of green to our red. I'll pop them in there. I'm a wee bit concerned about that gap in between. I'm not overly fond of the gap. Yes, Mary, I'm the same. Mary, I've been retired. Well, what time is it? What day is it? The 20th of January I retired. Well, from paid employment. And that's when I wanted to I wanted to concentrate on my stamping up. But I am so busy now. So busy. And it's not just the stamping up. I'm sort of keeping eyes on mum now that she's on her own. Spend the after most afternoons with her. But yes, very, very busy. I said to Stephen the other day, I don't know that I could work now. Too much happening. Okay, so there's our little front. So that's when we've got our oval sort of horizontal and that's when we've got it vertical. So yeah, I probably, if I had my time again, I'd move that heart over to the left a wee bit, just so there wasn't a blank space. And I don't think I'll use the other one. I think it would just feel a bit weird having the three hearts on the front there. Anyway, so that's, that's our heart. Okay, there's our belly band, I mean. Now the bling, I'm just gonna pop some bling on the belly band because you can't, obviously, if you're sliding, which one is it? If you're sliding something up and down, you can't put bling on there because it'll get stuck. And you don't really want it to get stuck. So I'm going to pop the bling on the belly band. Um, these are absolutely glorious to die for. They're opaque adhesive back gems. And this one here is our sweet sorbet, but it also comes in it. That would be a fresh freesia and, and a white. And that dark purple would be a gorgeous grape. So they are absolutely glorious. So I'm going to use obviously the sweet sorbet ones I've lost my little tool where are you my little tool gosh I'll use this one I've got one of mum's ceramics a couple of you have noticed that I use mum one of mum's old ceramics tools as a sort of a to pick up um, to pick up uh, bling and stuff so that's that's what I got from her from her ceramic business all those years ago. We used to complain as kids, we used to complain no end because mum would always be in, in, in the studio working on something. And then I did it to my own kids. They always go, mum, you're always in the craft room. So I thought, oh, well, that's history repeating. There we are. So that's the belly band for the one we're doing together today. And as we grab our card, make sure that's the right one, yep. Grab a card and it will, because we've organised it so well, it will fit perfectly, she says, hope, hoping it will fit perfectly on the card. There you go. It doesn't slip up and down because we fit it pretty much custom, didn't we? So there's our card. So that's our the one we've done together today. And this is the original that I did um, for when I was mucking around. The only difference being that I've popped the oval on um, horizontally on that one. And I think actually I do prefer it that way, even though that those hearts should be close together. I am actually think I'm preferring the, um, the oval that way. At least then we've got the full coverage of the, the paper on the back there. Okay, so that's our card for today. Where do you write on it? That was the question I asked myself when I popped it together. I would just write on it, probably pack, put another panel on the back and just write on that, just on one side. 
Um, Because I honestly don't think I could bring myself to write in the middle. I don't know. I don't think I could. I don't like my handwriting that much. There we go. All right. So that's our time together for midweek crafting. Uh, I'm going to heavily involved in organising my uh, launch at the moment, which is for the 28th of January. The ladies who are coming along from that, I'm, I've worked out the cards I'm going to show you. It's just a matter of doing some pre-recorded videos. So it's uh, excellent. Yeah, so it's coming together. I'm looking forward to it. But anyway, that's our card for today. If you have any questions about anything you've seen today, please reach out. Um, and uh, remember we're in the middle of celebration so purchasing these products can get you some wonderful freebies plus that amazing joining offer which I won't go into again because I've gone into it so many times I'm sure you know it off by heart by now but if you did want to join Stamping Up save incredible amounts of money and get the wonderful little machine at the same time then reach out as well um, lovely to see you all on. I'll uh, pop through the comments um, after the video and say hi uh, and I will see you all again on um, Saturday morning. Okay, so 